when you take a book and you write down what happened to you, you write down, you're saying the shit show that happened and all, everything that happened, what you're doing is you're giving yourself like a, a on top perspective, like a 3D or 2D perspective of what's going on. You're not in the situation anymore. You're an observer. You're observing yourself. And as you said, it's easier for me to find the solution for something that I'm looking at than finding a solution when I'm in that shit show, right? And so the journal gives you that uh, uh, gift of writing down whatever it is that happened. And, you, and, and as you're doing that, you're looking at yourself, you're observing yourself, and you're asking yourself, okay, this happened. But was it really as bad as I created it in my head? Because you know we have, what is it, 20,000 thoughts a day or whatever. We're thinking so much. And is it 80% a negative? Mm, Something like that, yeah. Yeah, if not more. For you to catch that, you really have to find a space where you can look at it, observe it, and say, well, this is a whole lot of crap that just went on in my face. What do I want to believe about myself? What do I want to believe about the situation? What can I do to solve it? And then you find yourself solving most of the uh, problems that you had, which prevents you from having these, uh, if it's a mental breakdown, if it's overloading of yourself. I always say we as human beings, we are such emotional beings. We go through so much emotion, but unfortunately we don't have a place to let that go or we don't give ourselves the gift of doing that. You know, sometimes you can be aware and you can be meditating or you can be doing something like, or going to gym or whatever it is. You're still not dealing with your emotions, but hey, um, you know, things like that. But you you don't take the time to stop. And f- as AJ was saying, you, you have your clothes and your room is filled with stuff and you're not taking time to download and sort it out and figure yourself out. And that's what journaling does. It takes It makes you pause. And figure things out and say, okay, I will deal with this now. I will deal with this later. You become your own therapist. And most, I even had to ask uh, therapists and psychologists, do you, um, do you ask your patients to journal? Is it some, a tool that you use? And they said, absolutely, because I'm not going to be with you every day. But you're with yourself. And if you can journal what is going on, then when we come back and what they find is when they come back in the sessions after they've done their journaling sessions, most of the stuff has already been dealt with. Now they're just observing what happened to you, but you sold it yourself. And I think so much of this is just valuing the one life that you have. It's so much easier to close that door and avoid it and put on Netflix or go play the video game than deal with cleaning your room. But then days go by, years go by, and some of our clients come to us and say, man, I wish I would have dealt with this in my 20s. I wish I would have dealt with that anxiety monster in my 30s instead of letting it run my life. And what comes out of a lot of this work is, especially for our analytical clients, very negative, self-critical thought. So they get to the journal and they can write 10, 12 things they did wrong that day. And that's why I love starting with, well, what are you grateful for? Even if, as Michael said, that was a complete shit show that Saturday night. Well, what are you grateful for on Sunday morning? Well, the fact that I had the freedom to go out on a Saturday. In my 20s, I was working Saturdays. I had the ability to actually muster the confidence to go talk to those people, even though it didn't go well. And I'm grateful that I have a warm cup of coffee on this Sunday morning to look forward to. Even the smallest amount of gratitude starts to reframe that brain that's so powerful And with our reticular activating system, dialing and honing in on the negative and honing in on the things that aren't working in our life and say, well, what is working? What what is a positive? And how can I build some momentum off the positive instead of sit there and and dwell in the self-criticism? And uh, Amanda Knox had a really powerful tweet thread about this when she got uh, her sentence for a crime she didn't commit. And she was going to be sitting in a jail cell knowing she didn't commit this crime. And that was going to be her life, was going to be those four walls in the cell. And she looked at it and said, well, this is my life. I'm going to make the most of it. 
And journaling is that tool that allows you to make the most of the time you have. Today is the youngest you'll ever be. And if you can attack the journal and look at the journal as a tool to make the most of your life, it becomes far more impactful than this blinking cursor on a blank page that I don't want to commit to, I don't want to type, I don't want to write. Or I have to do it perfectly. And there is a way that it needs to be done. Because I think about perfectionists and imagine a perfectionist looking at a bullet journal. You know how they do them perfectly? <laughs> What disaster is that? <laughs> you know, I mean, you're creating something that is just not is what I would. These are the points I would tell people how to start, where you should start when it comes to journaling. First, get a book that you like looking at every day. It needs to look good, right? Second, get a list of prompts, of questions that you can answer. Third, make sure, as AJ says, start with your gratitude. Start focusing on the positive because where your energy goes, your energy flows. When you start with a positive thing, then the rest doesn't seem that bad. If you go straight to whatever crap that you're go is going through, you're going to go into this spiral where you're never going to get yourself out from. So do that and then just release. Make mistakes, spell it wrong. It cancel stuff. It doesn't matter. Why? Because nobody's looking at it. It's yours. You can put stickers into it. You can draw. You can do whatever it is that you want because it's yours. Just hide it. <laughs> that nobody finds it if you have people <laughs> yeah. in your in your place. But just make it your space. Make make it yours in whatever way you want to make it because it's your thoughts and it's your world. Mm -hmm. 